The film starts with Ethan Hunt getting married to Julia Mead. Only their marriage is officiated by Solomon Lane and Ethan starts to get scared. Lane says that Ethan should have killed him. Ethan wakes up in a safe house in Belfast where he has brought his latest mission. Since capturing Lane, the remaining members of the syndicate, calling themselves the Apostles, have been continuing their terrorist activities, including releasing an outbreak of smallpox in Kashmir. They are currently working with a mysterious leader named John Lark to acquire three plutonium cores with the help of a kidnapped weapons expert named Nils Delbruck. The mission is to stop the Apostles from getting the cores before they can use it for what they want. Ethan meets up with Benji Dunn and Luther Stickle to make a trade with the Apostles for the plutonium. However, Luther is taken from his van by one of the Apostles, and they demand the plutonium before they kill Luther. Ethan instead shoots Luther, he's wearing a bulletproof vest, and then goes after the Apostles, but the cores have been stolen in the chaos. A news report on Wolf Blitzer's show details terrorist bombings in Mecca, Jerusalem and Rome. Delbruck is in a hospital bed watching this as Ethan and Luther enter the room. They tell him that his manifesto has been seized by authorities and that it will be read on the news unless he gives up the passcode to a phone containing information on Lark. Blitzer goes ahead and reads the manifesto and Delbruck opens the phone. The walls then come down as it was just an IMF trick to get him to cooperate and Blitzer is really Benji wearing a mask. Ethan meets with new IIMF secretary Alan Hunley who tells him that Lark is set to meet with an arms dealer known as the White Widow in Paris that evening at a party at the Grand Palais to get the plutonium. They are then met by new CIA director Erica Sloan and her agent August Walker. Because the mission in Berlin was a failure, Sloan doesn't have confidence in letting IMF operate on their own. So she has Walker go with Ethan to make sure the mission goes off without a hitch. Ethan and Walker get ready to halo jump out of a plane in the middle of a thunderstorm. After they jump, Walker is struck by lightning, and Ethan has to resuscitate him before they hit the ground. They manage to land on top of the Grand Palais as and head inside with the intent of knocking Lark out with a sedative and impersonating him to meet White Widow. They think they see him go into the bathroom, and Ethan identifies the man, and he fights him alongside Walker. Lark proves to be tougher than expected, even after getting thrown through a mirror, but Lark knocks him out with a laptop. Unfortunately, it's the laptop needed to make the face mask for Lark. He wakes up soon enough and continues to fight Ethan and Walker. He goes for his gun, but is then shot in the head by Ilsa Faust. They hide Lark's body in the stall as Ethan decides he has to pretend to be Lark himself. Ethan goes into a room using a wristband taken from Lark to gain access to meet with White Widow. He sits with her and arouses suspicion from her brother Zola, but Ethan convinces her that she needs his assistance. Several apostles in the room then try to kill White Widow, but Ethan and Ilsa kill them first, although White Widow manages to prove she can hold her own as well. Ethan goes to White Widow's home where the exchange is set to be made. Zola tells Ethan that the cause will be given to him once he has acquired the asset lane. They want him broken out as he will be transported from an armored convoy, and White Widow gives Ethan one core as a down payment, with the other two being promised once Lane is brought to them. Ethan has concerns that he may have to kill police to complete the task, but he convinces White Widow that he can get the job done. Walker meets with Sloan to give her false information that may implicate Ethan as Lark, even handing her a phone that he says belongs to him. Benji and Luther join Ethan and Walker as they intercept the convoy and knock it into the scene. They get Lane out while Ethan and Walker ride away in motorcycles and are chased by police through the city. Ethan falls behind Walker, but he manages to evade them and meet up with Benji and Luther. As they are taking Lane away, Ilsa comes in on her own cycle and tries to shoot at Lane, but they outrun her and head to their safe house. A policewoman sees them taking Lane, doesn't help that he has a bag on his head, and she orders the team to stop what they are doing. Four men then show up, and one of them shoots the officer. Before they kill her, Ethan kills all four of them and has her call for backup. They then take Lane to the safe house, where he once again tells Ethan that he should have killed him. Ethan meets with White Widow again after she tells him that the men that were killed were her own. He reassures her that Lane is in their possession and that he will be brought to them in London. Knowing that Ilsa has been following him, he speaks to her and she tells him that she has been tasked by MI6 to kill Lane. The team brings Lane to their safe house in London, where Hunley finds them and confronts Ethan with a dossier that suspects him of being Lark. Hunley wants to stop the mission, 
but Ethan tranquilizes him so that they can go meet with White Widow by having Benji wear a mask of him while the real Lane is watched by Walker. As they proceed to go through with this, Walker talks to Lane and reveals himself as the real John Lark, having been in league the whole time with Lane to frame Ethan so that they can get the plutonium. Walker then realizes that the Lane he was talking to is Benji and that Hunley heard everything while also letting Sloane hear it too. However, Sloane sends her own men to extract Lane and Walker. Walker kills the men and stabs Hunley, but before he gets away, Luther sticks Walker with a tracker. Ethan tries to help a dying Hunley, but he tells Ethan to go get Walker. Benji guides Ethan using a tracker for himself to get Walker as he chases him through London. As he manages to catch up with Walker, he tells Ethan that he has to turn himself in and let their plan go through, or else they will kill Julia. The team gathers after they realize that the other two bombs are together and that they can be stopped once the countdown has been initiated. Luther tells Ilsa about Julia and how she and Ethan knew they couldn't be together since his missions were more of a priority than their relationship and that Ethan must also care about Ilsa to be helping her. Ethan, Benji, Ilsa and Luther head to a campsite in Kashmir where they learn that Lane and Walker plan to contaminate the water supply in India, Pakistan and China to starve a third of the world's population according to their belief that there can't be peace without a great suffering. At the campsite, Ethan finds that Julia is there with her new husband, Patrick. When Julia spots Luther, she realizes that they are on a mission. Ethan goes after Walker as he has the detonator and already set off the bombs. Luther finds the bomb behind a tower and starts to try and disarm it. Ilsa and Benji go to find Lane to get the other bomb. Ethan climbs up the rope of a helicopter after Walker boards another. Ilsa manages to locate Lane in a house where he is keeping the bomb, but he attacks her and ties her up. Benji goes after her and fights Lane, only for him to attempt to hang Benji. Ilsa frees herself and fights Lane until she manages to subdue him and cut Benji down before they have to disbail the bomb. Meanwhile, Julia finds Luther and tries to help him. Ethan hijacks the helicopter after killing the two men inside. Walker attempts to shoot at Ethan to throw him off their trail. The helicopters then collide and start to tumble down a mountain, but Ethan and Walker manage to get out quickly, just as one chopper is hanging over the edge of the cliff by a hook. Ethan goes for the detonator, and Walker starts to fight him. They both fall over the side of the cliff and hang on by the rope. Ethan scales the side of the cliff and pulls the rope off, leading the hook to smash into Walker's head, sending him and the chopper crashing down. Ethan goes for the detonator, just as his team manages to cut the wire with a mere second to spare, after Ethan has already stopped the countdown. Ethan wakes up in the camp, having been found by Sloane in her own chopper. He sees Julia as he wakes up. He tells her how sorry he is for everything he has put her through, but Julia insists that she would never be where she is and doing what she loves if she had never met Ethan. They part ways one last time. We hear Sloane's voice say that Lane has been handed over to MI6, with White Widow having acted as a broker between them and the CIA, Benji Luther, and Ilsa then join Ethan as he is recovering.